Okay, so you've created three projects now. You've created the API project, the client project, and the server project. And in the server, you've used JAX-WS in order to take your SOAP annotations from your interface and use those to bootstrap a SOAP server. And on the client, you've used some spring wiring uh, in order to take those same annotations and turn it into a SOAP compliant client. Now the question is, how do you test your client? You can't use the browser very easily, though you could create a servlet that exercised your client if you wanted to. You also can't use a Java main method because really what you'd like to do is be able to exercise that Beans XML file and tell your application to go look at that to know how to wire everything together. That's also a possible route that you could go. An easier route than both of these is to create a unit test that is able to tell Spring to load itself up so that your unit test can invoke the Hello World service on its own. I'm going to show you how to do that. So, uh, by the way, it's also this is also a standard way to test your client is to use a unit test. And so you'll find that um, you'll use this in the industry uh, quite often. The first thing that you want to do is take the Beans XML file that you've configured for your client and put it in the source test resources directory. The source test resources directory is a special source folder that your unit tests will look at to find different resources like property files, XML files, and so on. It doesn't need a web XML file if you're wondering because it's not deploying it as a web app. In fact, in the end, it's just doing a Java main that's a little bit more sophisticated in order to run your unit test. And that doesn't need a web XML because it's not actually servicing web requests. It's sending them, but not servicing them. It's not receiving them. So here, all you need is a Beans XML file in your source test resources directory. Put it in the same package as the package where your test will be from. In my case, it's edu.numont.csc380.hello.service. So you can see that my Beans XML file is right here. This is the same XML file that was shown to you in another tutorial for creating a JAXWS client. All I've done is I've copied it into the source test resources directory into the package edu numont cc 380 hello service. And now what will happen is with a little bit more configuration, I will create a new test class underneath source test Java in the same package, and it will use this Beans XML file in order to wire everything together. Now there's one more thing that we need, which is we need JUnit itself. So depending on what dependencies you already have in your palm, you may have part of what you need, but not everything. First of all, you need JUnit. If you don't already have it in here, make sure to cut and paste it. The group is JUnit, the artifact is JUnit, and the version is 4 and up. I went ahead and picked the most recent JUnit version, which is 4.6. I recommend that one. Your next dependency is Spring Test. Spring Test is some extra classes that Spring has provided to make working with Spring and JUnit together much easier. You'll find that you need to write almost no code in order to get this put together. Once you have those in, make sure to put scope test on them. It will still work if you don't, but it's good practice to specify which jars are only for the purpose of testing, because then when you deploy your war, it won't include them since you don't need those when you've already deployed to production. So now we'll go ahead and create a new class, new test class. You can say new JUnit test case. I recommend JUnit 4. And then you're going to put it in the source test Java source folder instead of source main Java. Give it the package that's the same package as the class that you're testing. And then let's give it 
a name. Usually, by naming convention, I would call this hello world service test. But since I already have one, I'll call it second hello world service test. You need to have it extend a certain spring interface, abstract JUnit for spring context tests, and then save. And what you'll see here is that now you've been now you've created a test, or now you've created a test class that you can run immediately, and it'll fail because you've just got a fail here. You'll replace it with some tests. There are two things that need to happen before you do that, and both are related to using Spring in order to help you uh, with your uh, exercise of the of the unit test. The first thing is you need to tell it just like you needed to tell the web XML where the uh, beans XML is, you need to tell this class where it is. So it's context configuration is the class you need. If you start typing to context and do a control space, it'll find it for you. Locations equals beans.xml. This will tell it to look for beans.xml for the file. Now this is relative to this path right here. So because I'm in source test Java and I'm in this package, it will look for the beans XML in that same package, which is why we made that special choice for the package name. It is a relative path though, so if you wanted to go search around and do double dots to go find the beans XML, then you could do that too. The very last thing that we need for Spring is we need to tell it what file we need, which will be our client. Now our client is a hello world service. And whenever we have something that we want Spring to give us, we call it a dependency. And when we place it in a class and we ask Spring to take care of putting that dependency into our other class, we call it dependency injection. To invoke dependency injection here, we just simply use a special annotation to tell Spring to look at this field. If we don't put this parameter here, then Spring won't look at this field and won't try to resolve it for us. By putting AutoWire here, we're telling Spring, please look at this member variable. And if you have something inside your Beans XML that qualifies, then please set it there. Now we see that we do. We have a JaxRest client that is going to implement this interface. And because of that, the bean that's produced here is a candidate to be placed here. And so by putting this value here, and putting this here, when this test case starts up, Spring will look at this value, look at what's here in Beans XML, and decide to take that JaxRest client and set this value inside our test. The last thing we need to do is actually test it. Now when we're doing testing, usually we use asserts instead of system outs. And we say, here's what I would have expected to come back, and here's what actually came back. And now we're ready to run it. So it's starting at the spring configuration, and it's going through, and now it's done. You can see it's done because the stop button's off go over here to JNUnit, and you see that it succeeded. And so that's how you do it. This is actually exercising the client. It went ahead and used CXF because Spring, we told it to in the Spring configuration file. It used CXF to make this, turn this Java invocation into a SOAP request that was then sent across the wire to my server. And then the server on that side, CXF, took it via the CXF servlet turned it into a Java invocation, invoked the Java method, and then went back the other direction, sent back a SOAP request, SOAP response, and then over here on this side, it received it and turned it into the Java response that we have here. For your Hello World SOAP assignment, you'll do 
you'll do uh, exactly the same thing, but with the prime service that you created in the first assignment.